Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do natural logarithmic integration. Let's take a look at our rules to start. If we're trying to integrate 1 over x dx, the antiderivative will be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Let's generalize that rule in number 2. If we're trying to integrate an expression u that's in the denominator, and its derivative appears in the numerator, we'll call that u prime, then the antiderivative will be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Let's take a look at our first example. In our first example, we're asked to integrate 2 over x dx. So 2 is a constant, so I'm going to write that out in front. And when I do that, I'm left with 1 over x dx. So here, I have a situation where I've got an expression in the denominator, x, and the derivative of that denominator, 1, appears in the numerator. So it's form-fitting for this template right here. And if we take the antiderivative, we're going to get the 2 that's out in front. We're going to get the natural log of our denominator, which in this case is x. And then we're going to put on our arbitrary constant, plus c. So this is our first example of natural logarithmic integration. Let's go on to example two. So we're on slide number two, and I wanted to remind you of the rule that occurred on slide number one on the upper right. If we're integrating an expression u prime over u, that is, we have some denominator u, and its derivative is in the numerator, then when we find the antiderivative, we get the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Let's see how that applies to question number two, where we're asked to integrate 1 over 4x minus 1. So our denominator is 4x minus 1, and the derivative of the denominator is 4. So it's not quite form-fitting to our rule. This is going to require that we use u substitution. And I'm going to allow u to be the denominator. Differentiating both sides by x, we end up getting du equals 4dx. Now I notice that I don't have a 4 floating around in my numerator, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 4. For organizational purposes, I'll place all of these elements in a box. And now I'm going to rewrite our problem exclusively in terms of u. So instead of 1 over 4x minus 1, I'm going to have 1 over u. And instead of dx, I'm going to replace that with 1 fourth du. And since 1 fourth is a constant, I'll put it on the outside. Now this is form-fitting with our rule over to the right. We have an expression u in the denominator and its derivative occurs in the numerator. For that reason, we can apply the rule and say that our answer is 1 fourth, the natural log of the absolute value of our denominator, which in this case is u, plus c. But of course, we need to back substitute in for u. So here is our answer to question number two. A little bit more difficult than what we saw on the first slide because we needed u substitution. Let's go on to example three. In example number three, we're asked to find the area of the region bounded by the graph of y equals x over x squared plus one, the x-axis, and the line x equals three. So as so we have a clear picture of what we're looking at, I think we should try to attempt to draw the sketch of this. This graph is a rational function. There's going to be a horizontal asymptote at x equals 0 because the degree of the numerator is less than that of the denominator. So I'm just going to indicate that with this blue line that I've just added. I'm also going to have a boundary at x equals 3, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that in as well. And now I'm going to consider some of the elements of rational functions. I know to figure out the y-intercept that I'm going to let x equal 0. And if I let x equal 0, I'm going to end up with an output of 0 as well. And if I plug in 1, I'm going to get 1 over 
1 squared plus 1, which would be 1 over 2, or 0.5, which would bring us up here. If I plug in 2 for x, I'm going to get 2 over 5, which is 2 fifths, or 0.4. And if I plug in 3 for x, I get 3 over 10, which is 3 tenths, or 0.3. So if I were going to sketch this, the graph goes up abruptly like this, and then it, and then it comes down like that. And what I'm trying to find is the area of this region right here. So I can figure out this area by setting up a definite integral. Now the lower limit of integration is going to be 0, because that's where the graph starts. And the upper limit is going to be 3, because that's where the graph ends. And I'm integrating x over x squared plus 1. And of course I'm going to need to put a dx there as well. So what I notice here is I have a situation in which the denominator is x squared plus 1. The derivative of the denominator is 2x, which is really close to what I have in the numerator, but it's off by just a little bit. It's off by this number 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do u substitution, and hopefully that'll make it form fit to our template rule. So I'm going to let u equal x squared plus 1. Differentiating with respect to x, I get du equals 2x dx. I notice that I do not have a 2 in the numerator, so I'm going to go ahead and divide out this 2, leaving me with 1 half du equals x dx. For organizational purposes, I'll place all of these elements inside of a box. And now I'm going to rewrite my problem, which originally was stated in terms of x, and now I'll do that in terms of u. So instead of x over x squared plus 1, I'm going to put 1 over u. And instead of x dx, I'm going to put 1 half du. The x dx that I have on top here is the same as the x dx that occurred in my substitution step. And that was equal to 1 half du. Now it's also critical that you change the limits of integration as well. This is a step that many, many students forget to do. So we started with a lower limit of 0 for x. If I plug that in and I get 0 squared plus 1, I end up with a new lower limit of 1. My old upper limit was 3, but if I plug that in for x, I get a new upper limit of 10. Now we have a situation in which the denominator, u, uh, has a derivative of 1, which occurs in the numerator. So this form fits to our rule. So the, the antiderivative is going to start out with our 1 half, we're going to have the natural log of the absolute value of u. And we're going to evaluate this integral first at 10 and then at 1. And we will find the difference between those. So I'm going to end up having 1 half the natural log of 10. And notice how I've dropped the absolute value bars. The absolute value of 10 is just 10, so I don't need the bars anymore. Minus 1 half the natural log of 1. Now, let's consider the second portion of this statement. We have an implied base here of e. And if we do a quick swing, e to what power is equal to 1? Well, the answer is 0. So what we really have here is 1 half ln 10 minus 0. So the final answer, we have two choices. We could say that it's 1 half ln 10, or if you use the power rule, this power of 1 half can jump up and become the power of 10, which would be the natural log of 10 to the 1 half, or the natural log of the square root of 10. So this was a great problem because it asked us to find the area in the context of a natural logarithmic integration problem.